All right, welcome back, guys. So I want to talk to you today about why it's important that you go into RAF Classic when it comes with a lot of gold. We're not specifically going to look at how you can make gold in TBC at the moment, but if you check the link up, can I get it right this time without flipping the camera? The link up there then there's some good gold farming ideas which I've been doing myself to make as much gold as physically possible. Well, I'm trying to make 100,000 gold before RAF, and I'm about to tell you why you actually need to make that gold. Before we get too far into the video, please do make sure you hit that like button. It really does help out. Thank you to everyone who's subscribed, and if you aren't subscribed, then hit the subscribe button down there because that'll, that'll be great, won't it? So there's a lot of expensive things in RAF, and some of them are, I'm not going to say vanity items, but you know you could live without them, don't get me wrong. But you're probably going to want them because they just make things a lot more convenient. So one of the big ones is obviously the repair mount. That's quite an obvious one to start with. So we'll leave that to a little bit later if you don't know what that is. We'll start with some of the things that are maybe essential to PvE or PvP. And the reason I say essential because the first one we're going to start with is dual spec. Now, being able to just switch your talents on the fly is extremely important. If you're wanting to get into PvP and it, you don't want to be spending gold every week and just the inconvenience of respecking, for a thousand gold, you can activate dual spec. Spec. You just go to your trainer. You can get it at level 40. So if you've actually got, you know, an ult that you're leveling and you want to do dungeons on it and you want to like, you know, have a, a healing spec essentially for dungeons, but also be able to not be gimped in the outside world. You might be a druid like I am here. You might want to have a boomy spec for when you're outside questing and a resto spec for when you're actually doing dungeons on your way up. Or obviously the most important thing about this is when you're actually level 80 and you're wanting to PvP. So you're going to have a PvP spec and a PvE spec or you want to be a tank and a healer, or you just if, even if you're a mage and you just wanted an arcane spec and a fire spec, it can be useful to have sort of a, a single target spec and an AoE spec. Even as a feral DPS druid, it can be quite beneficial to have two different feral specs. So that's going to cost you a thousand gold. So you're going to want that straight away and possibly on multiple characters. Now let's start with some less obvious ones. So shoulder enchants obviously if you've been playing tbc odds are you're going to have the eldor and scryer's shoulder enchants you know the exalted versions anyway so this ain't going to be as big of a deal and the reason i say it's not going to be as big of a deal is because if we actually look at the shoulder enchants so if we look at the shoulder enchant which is the exalted eldor enchant which is 30 attack power and 10 crit the Sons of Hodir Exalted is not massively better. In fact, it's only about 10 attack power. So yeah, you get 10 extra attack power and 5 extra crit. Now, this isn't huge, but if you want to get this, because obviously you want to get every single reputation done in Wrath of the Lich King, you want the best possible shoulder enchants, assuming that you're not inscription. Because if you check my inscription video out there, <laughs> I got it right again, hopefully. Or I got it wrong again, either way. At least I'm consistent. You can get a much better shoulder enchant from being a scribe, but... Assuming you're not a scribe and you're just going for the best shoulder enchants you can get, then this is what you want to do. And to do this, you need to do dailies. You, well, you need to do a quest chain, first of all, in Storm Peaks. So the quest chain will start here in K3 in Storm Peaks, which is quite a short quest chain. But eventually you get to a point where basically all you'll be doing is dailies. And there is another option. You still will probably do these dailies, but the way that you can get quick rep is handing in relics of Alduar. Now, they're going to be expensive, but if you're wanting to be one of the first or you're wanting to just get your shoulder enchant really quick, whatever your reasoning for it is, you could be sinking a lot of gold into these relics of Alduar and they will be expensive because the, the demand's going to be high. Everyone's wanting to get their shoulder enchant. So if you're stacked out on gold, you can just have that edge at getting your shoulder enchant before everybody else. And like you can see, on a completely sort of fresh RAF server where where the uh, economy hasn't quite settled yet, there's still four gold each. So you're looking at 40 gold per hand in, which is crazy expensive, really. Especially when you're only going to get a few hundred rep. Now, a couple of obvious ones, but maybe not obvious because you might be sort of underestimating the amount of cost that's going to be involved, especially early on with inscription. So if you're wanting to get your glyphs, there'll be certain glyphs which will be in high demand with very low supply and you're going to have to pay a decent amount of gold just to be able to get them. So having like a thousand gold, and I'm, I, I truly believe that it probably will be about that for a full set of glyphs, especially if you've got those glyphs where you're quite unlucky and there's not many people in the first week or so that can actually make them. Having some gold put aside for those expensive glyphs is important. And if I'm completely honest with you, it's normally going to be the minor ones that are actually more expensive than the major ones. And the minor ones may play a small part in comparison to the major ones, you know, in terms of damage or healing or anything like that. But it's the minor ones that are normally really like add extra convenience, like, you know, removing reagent cost of certain spells and things like that. So you're going to want them either way. And while we're on sort of auction house and buying things, obviously pre-raid, when you're trying to get your pre-raid bis, certain BOEs you're going to want. So if we 
was to use blacksmithing or plate wearers as an example, certain items are going to set you back a pretty penny. So like I said, if we look at plate, you've got spike titan steel treads, which are very nice. Spike titan steel helm, which most plate wearing DPS are going to want to get as part of their pre-raid bis. But there's also some really good weapons, etc. And they require titan steel bars. Now, titan steel bars are on a daily cooldown. So there can only ever be, you know, a limited number, if you like. So titan steel bars will hold their price certainly for at least a month i would say of release so having a good five six thousand gold just to be able to buy you know a few of the boe epics like or buying the titan steel to get blacksmiths to make the gear or anything like that you know we we, we can talk about the lever if we were to look at the lever legs that my character uses that the lever are not quite as expensive as the the plate will be because the plate require the daily cooldown but still they're really strong pre-raid items that you're gonna want to have gold put away you know, to be able to get, you know, which looking at the legs, 105 spell power, they've got really good stats on. And, you, you know, if you're some form of leather wearing spirit using healer, i.e. a resto druid, then you're going to want to get hold of these quite early. Now, the next one I spoke about in the inscription video, and if you are just to name a few, feral druid, rogue, warrior, hunter, rep paladin warrior you know any of those what use strength or agility you're gonna want dark mood card greatness and it's gonna be really expensive if you don't know how you get dark moon card greatness i would recommend watching the inscription video which i've already linked and i will put a link in the description below so you can see just how costly it's gonna be but you're gonna be looking at tens of thousands of gold to be able to get one of these and when i say tens of thousand i would predict the first ones are going for 30 40 000 gold that much because it's pure luck pure rng the people that are going to be getting them are going to be the people that have got five or six or more you know as many as you like herbers that are going around and gathering just for you just to get your trinket and obviously bots bots will be getting it quite quick as well i would have thought because <laughs> this fate they're not going anywhere in raf are they but dark moon car greatness is absolutely amazing and it's not pre-raid bis for most classes for most classes it's bis until for some classes up until icc it is that strong so yes people are going to pay whatever is required to be able to get this trinket because they know it's not going to be replaced for a long long time so if you haven't if you haven't got any plans on having a herb and a scribe for wrath of the lich king i would heavily recommend having preferably a druid or something like that that can go around and herb really quick the nobles deck which turns into dark moon car greatness is going to be able to make some real good money and if you're wanting it you're going to need some real good money to be able to actually get it right there's only three more three more to talk about but one of them is the most expensive and all of them are pretty useful one of them you can't really play without if i'm completely honest with you well you can but cold weather flying this is basically a requirement but you know this you're going to make that gold while you're leveling so obviously you're going to be able to buy cold weather flying at 80 because you're going to make the gold just from questing anyway but obviously it's something you're going to want so you might as well have the gold put aside for it now so you can waste that thousand two thousand gold you make while leveling on consumables for raids when you get in okay let's get on to the really expensive one the repair mount Loads of people are going to want this repair mount, and I'd imagine lots of people are going to buy it more or less the second they walk into Dalaran. So it teaches you how to summon this mount, and it has free, it's a free person mount and carries vendors. Now, you'd have seen this in retail or back in the day during Wrath of the Lich King, but it's 16,000 gold. And let's be honest, it's 16,000 gold well spent because you know, unless you're engineering so you can put down repair bots or anything like that, this is extremely convenient to have. And um, I myself want to buy this more or less on day one. As soon as I get into Dalaran, I want my repair mount because it really, once you've got it, you physically, you can't play without it because it is, it's just, it's an essential part of the game for me. So if you want to start saving for it, get yourself 16k put aside so you can buy it on day one. Be that person that when you run outside Nax, someone can mount up to repair and everything and it can be you. So 16,000 gold. Now the last one, which a lot of people forget about, but is extremely useful because it's an expensive item, but it's an item that you'll be able to use for the whole of the expansion pretty much even though at the same item level there are better alternatives but it will always have a use i'll give you three seconds to guess what i'm gonna say three two one did you get it right the Kirin Tor Ring. Now, the Kirin Tor Ring with reputation reduction is just under 7,000 gold. 
and it's it's a really nice ring. If we compare the Helium ring in comparison to what I'm using at the moment, which are what you'd consider pretty much pre-ray BIS rings, you know, the 200 eye level epics, it's got 49 stamina, 34 intellect, 36 spirit. So, you know, it's on par with what I'm using. It's got the same amount of spell power as I'm using. It's got mana per five, which, all right, as a resto druid, you're not going to want, but it's got that teleport to Dalaran. A 30 minute cooldown teleport to Dalaran, which, you know, is not, it doesn't share a cooldown with your Hearthstone. So this is what I meant by being really useful for the entire expansion, because it's always nice nice to even just have it as a form of travel but it's also nice to buy as soon as you ding level 80 to be able to use it because it will be good you know you would be able to walk into nax wearing it and there'd be no issues and the best part about it is every time a new patch hits so each new phase or each new tier of content you can upgrade it for a thousand gold so it stays relevant throughout the entire expansion anyway but really you're wanting it for that teleport now that's a lot of gold that you're going to need to get all right you know and like i said yeah even if you just get in the ring the mount you're flying your dual spec you're not worried about dark moon car greatness you know you're going into tens of thousands of gold like 25 30k you know especially if you're getting yourself a couple of boe sort of crafted epics as well you put dark moon car greatness on that and you've got some farming to do all right <laughs> so look i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please make sure you like and subscribe plenty more wrath videos coming out because as you guys probably know already i'm on a seasonal server which i am absolutely smashing and absolutely loving every minute of it i'm on four level eight is now and all of them pretty much geared to go into knack so lots of raiding to do lots of guides come in lots of just everything so hit that subscribe button and make sure you uh keep an eye out for new videos ring the bell as well but yeah until next time peace out